Hello everyone, this is Shadi Reyes from Denver 2022. I'm really privileged to be with Dr. Bridge Maney. He has been a pioneer interventional cardiologist and he's gonna to talk to us about lift atrium uh, interventions and innovations. Yes. Yes. So we are an innovation summit, our intervention conference. We would like, although we really appreciate the clinical studies, cases and stuff, but th this conference has a niche for people yes. like yourself who are innovative and want to push the envelope to make structural and coronary intervention are better. So tell us about what's new. A lot, lot of things. You know, first of all, thank you for having me here. Absolutely. This is certainly delightful as always. Thank you. You know, we as cardiologists, I think, are a special breed of people, if, if I might call ourselves a different breed of people, is we love to innovate. We like to think outside the box and how do we make this happen? How do we make what happen? And our field is here today in 2022 because a lot of forward-thinking people came up with ideas as to how to put stents into coronaries, you know, yes. how to do other kinds of things, how to do balloon angioplasty. Think about this, the Brockenbrough needle was invented in the NIH in 1959. 59. And, and most people don't remember, there was no need for a Brockenbrough needle at that point in time. And the reason for having the Brockenbrough needle, or the use of the Brockenbrough yeah. needle, at that point in time was just to cross over and measure left atrial pressure. pressure. That's, That's it. Wow. Can That's, you imagine? I, can, can you, can, I mean, it is, First time. that is, was the indication of the Brock and Broad needle at oh. the time it was invented at the NIH. Most of this meeting today would completely be empty if there was no left atrial procedure involvement exactly. in, in the meeting today, Correct. apart from so many other innovations and other things 100%. that are happening, right? So think about it from a perspective of a device that was invented in 1959. And what is going on in the left atrium? There's billions and billions of dollars that are being spent not only in research, not only in innovation, actually doing procedures. procedures. So the left atrial market is $10 billion strong. Wow. It's going to grow to a $30 billion market. That's not a small market, right? That's why it's probably going to be much bigger than eventually the coronary markets and all those that we have, so, have grown up in and, and spent our careers in. So the problem that comes is if I have a $30,000, $40,000, $50,000 device that I'm going to be implanting in the left atrium. And I have a device that is now 63 years old that is used to get me to that spot. That sort of does not make sense. It's, it's like saying, you know, we, we send off that fancy, you know, telescope, James Webb, $10 billion James Webb telescope that mm -hmm. we all look at those images on a daily basis right. and say, wow, how beautiful. Can you imagine if the rocket did not get it to where it was supposed to be? Well, the $10 billion just disappeared. It's a waste. And lifetimes worth of work on people from NASA, from the European Space Agency, and so on and so forth would have just gone to waste. Correct. It's the same concept same here. Same thing. How do you get your payload in the appropriate spot? accurately, safely. So therefore, we yeah. came up with a new innovation, no. which is needle-less. So there is no Brock and Brown needle, there's no stiff thing, there's no spear. Okay, how, so so it it's work? a multi-directional catheter okay. that has a balloon at the tip. The balloon overhangs the shaft by three millimeters. You don't have to go to the SVC. You come from below like a swan, the balloon is inflated, everything is being led by the balloon, go up, no going into the hepatic vein, no getting into the renal vein. Get up and you flex and you clock to four o'clock and you're on the septum. No going up and coming down, oops, I came down too much. Let's go back up. Put the thing together, push it up, push come it up back again. Deflect and you're at the spot. Now you can push it up, you can go sideways, you can do whatever with the it's needle steerable. base system. All, it's steerable. Full steerable. Steerable, all directions. So the needle base system, you cannot push up with the needle out, right? Or, or even if you're not supposed to, you can require yeah. up, right? So therefore, the balloon provides visibility. Yes. There is no confusion. Where am I? Especially when you got leads, especially when you have fibrotic places on the septum that look like a tent, and you think that's the tent that's being caused by you. It's not. Yes. It's the anatomy of the intagal septum. Right. Positioning, millimeter by millimeter precision, right? So accuracy, safety, visibility. And the echo, it's, it's guided by echo, it's, it's the echo is very echo. You can see, there's can no see confusion. It. You can see the balloon very nicely, right? 
Once you find the right spot, exactly. then you advance the dilator, which is subplanar the balloon, and tent a little bit more. The, the dilator is also very blunt. You're not going to cross. Okay. When you're completely happy, if you're not happy, pull the dilator back, shimmy over a little bit more. Yeah. Advance the dilator, that's when you activate radio frequency and the dilator crosses. The other thing is the dilator can only be pushed 10 millimeters. You can't ram it the way through and through. So somebody gets which overzealous, the, which happens. That's yeah. how we get into stitch punctures, right? Yes. Commonest cause of pericardial effusion. Absolutely. Right? You cannot do that, but you can do anything. Right? But nonetheless, right? So 10 millimeter goes in. And, you and cannot go if you're there. You cannot go, and then you let off the, the pedal. Even if for some reason you're very close to something dangerous, yeah. it's not going to go across because it's very blunt, right? Yes. It's O35 wire compatible. You get your wire across, you deflate your balloon, get out, right? And then you come out. Now, you could go across the left atrium. You could technically reinflate the balloon. Now you've got a balloon tip, multi-directional catheter in the left atrium. You could do your pulmonary venous isolation. So EPs love it because they can see the end of their shaft. Right. It's where they are. You can get into the left ventricle Watch to do TMVRs. Yeah. You can do PVR closures. You bring your balloon on top of the color jet, occlude the color jet, put your wire, inflate, deflate the balloon, get your shaft in, put your occluder device. You can get in the appendage, you can get in the pulmonary veins. The, the thing that I really like is when you reinflate the balloon, you're not going to come back into the right atrium. A lot of times you're trying to do oh, PVR closures. Oh, lost closure. it, yeah. Lost it. Oh my God, I'm going to cross That's all over again. again. Yeah. Or in TMVR. It just happened yesterday. Yeah, so it won't happen. It, lost it won't happen because the balloon is going to prevent you from coming back. Yeah. So a lot of these, these things over the years, 25 years of doing transeptals, I said, what if, what if that? Well, how, how, how do we fix it? 16 so years all, technology. All, all so now. It was a 63 year old technology. Yeah. Beautiful. So the name of the device is called Safe Cross. Safe Cross. Safe Cross. So it's commercial. It's available. Uh, we've done a lot of cases. People are loving it. Uh, What's the sheet size for the it's device? It's the same as Agil. It's eight and eight and a half. Eight and a half. ID OD is uh, twelve and a half. Okay. So it's Agilis was our predicate device for FDA clearance. Yeah. So it's absolutely the same. And the wire you had once you cross. The you can use, but what we've said is wire use, use, your, use your wire. We're not okay. going to tell you which wire to use. Okay. So depending on the anatomy, you may want to use a pigtail well, wire. Using it, yeah. Depending on the anatomy, you may want to get in the left upper pulmonary vein. You use whatever wires, your choice. We are not going to handcuff you and say, this is all you can use. Right? You just want to safely, like a space shuttle, so get you over. To take the James Webb, and where it's supposed to be, yes, we can get good pictures <laughs> right? on follow-up. That look how beautiful the TMVR yes. device looks. It's not sitting canted, it's sitting exactly the way it's supposed to be sitting. We got you there, finish your work. Finish your work, <laughs> and that's it, right. So, so, so that's uh, where we are. And, and like anything else, you know, the balloon tip technology has many, many other applications. Mm -hmm. you know? So we are exploring those different kinds of applications as to how could we use our basic concept yes. of balloon tip. And Shadi, maybe next year, I'll tell you a few other things that we're doing with our technology. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, the field of uh, what we have is growing. Yeah. And all we, our job is to make people's life easier, simpler, safer. Yes. And what I love really about this is you're decreasing the radiation. Right. The sticking in the yes. wrong spot. Yes. Uh, multiple attempts back and forth. Yes. Crossing, losing the cross, anticoagulation, right. thrombosis. Yes. So we've done about 150 odd cases. Nice. Our maximum time to cross has been two minutes. Wow. That's 150 cases with di different places, different operators. So your average uh, lower than two minutes. This is your maximum. This is the 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 max. Oh, there was sometimes when people took long, but they were not doing the transept. Yes. You know. No. So the actual act of doing There's the transept is... There's some to it, but yeah. it seems like a very yeah, everything shallow... Everything has a learning curve It's very shallow. Yeah, and it's absolutely. very intuitive, you know. Yeah. We're all used to playing with balloons. We're all... Swan dance, everybody it's, it's, uh, it's, and, and the echo people love it because they can see it because they're the ones who are guiding you doing those things. Yes. And you're saying, I can't see you. Wow. <laughs> There's nothing to be seen, right? I see you, I see it. It's right. there. The <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't see it. <laughs> yes. Well, so, so we, we, that's so really we, wonderful. we are very happy with it, you know, as, as the market adoption Absolutely. happens, you know, so they, Absolutely. The, as the innovation finds its niche yes. in the community, that well. will allow us to go after some of the other things that we think, you know, which could yeah. be 
as disparate as treatment as a therapeutic device for different diseases, processes such yeah. as pulmonary embolism, yeah. and and you name it. You know, th this concept yeah. can potentially help. We don't know the answer to that, right? right? Yeah. But the idea of exploring those options seems very in enticing to us. Yeah. So, well. Dr. Manny, really appreciate your time and sharing this innovation. For all these watching the Cardiovascular Innovation Channel, this is really what we're here for, to, to learn about new innovation that makes your patient safely yes. get the procedure done with less radiation and also exactly show you the guidance and where to go. Perfect. Dr. Sounds Manny, good. thank you so much for your time. Please watch videos and others on YouTube channel. This is Shadi Reis from CVI 2022.